I'm Bernie O'Rourke, Extension Youth Livestock Specialist with the University of Wisconsin Extension and the University of Wisconsin Animal Sciences Department. Part of the educational process for youth enrolled in meat animal projects is to gain knowledge about their project as a food animal. This is a critical piece of the learning process and gives youth the skills to improve their project for future years by the information gained. Capturing this information assigns a value to the animal based on industry standards. One of the ways we gain information on animals as a food product is by collecting carcass information. This is done by taking measurements on the carcass of the animal by a judge. The majority of the car county fairs in Wisconsin utilize the collection of actual measurements. Although utilizing ultrasound to collect carcass data is done by some county fairs. Ultrasound is a technology that can capture carcass measurements such as back fat and loin muscle area without harvesting the animal. Although there are many pros and cons to using either carcass data or ultrasound, the important thing is being able to capture data and, be, and then being able to interpret what it means. In ultrasound, a technician will capture an image from the live animal in the same location where carcass information is collected. It produces an image from the ultrasound machine shown here. The technician will then use this image to estimate the back fat, loin muscle area, and in beef, a quality grade. Here is Ron Russell, Senior Lecturer with the University of Wisconsin-Madison Animal Sciences Depart Department to explain the carcass data and what it means. This is going to be a quick session on beef carcass evaluation and just to highlight some of the things that are evaluated typically in, in beef carcasses in consideration of their value. Okay? So just as a brief review on a beef carcass, we have, uh, we have a hind quarter and we have a fore quarter. The hind quarter consists of the carcass from the 13th rib back. The fore quarter consists of the carcass from the 12th rib forward. The fore quarter has two major primal cuts. It's the beef chuck and the beef rib. The hind quarter has the beef loin and the beef round. We tend to, in beef carcass evaluation, put a lot of emphasis on this cut surface that's between the 12th and 13th rib, which is where we evaluate the carcass for external fat deposit, as well as muscling. Those are what we'll use in the development of what we call a yield grade. And then we'll also consider this area to be able to look at and evaluate the quantity of marbling in the beef carcass. And the marbling is the intramuscular fat that's within the muscle itself that contributes to muscle quality. And then we'll consider the animal's age, and we do that mostly by a verification of the condition of these, what are called the buttons, or these cartilage uh, tips on the top of these dorsal processes of the thoracic vertebrae. Okay? So in general, our consideration, our evaluation of beef carcasses, is we'll look first and foremost at consideration of yield. And for yield, we'll look at our assessment of outside fat on the carcass. To get the measurement of that outside fat, we'll use a beef uh, probe. And this beef probe has tenths of an inch of fat measurement. And we'll simply take a measurement of the fat on a carcass at what we call the three-quarter three lateral measurement. So we'll go three-fourths of the way around past this this ribeye muscle, and we'll measure the fat thickness at that particular location. So for example, on this carcass, that would measure just over three-tenths of an inch of fat. Okay, And we use that fat measurement to represent the amount of fat on the entire carcass. And so we can make adjustments if that, for some reason, doesn't represent, if we think it's uh, had some fat that accidentally got trimmed off there or pulled off, we might adjust the amount of fat measurement up on the carcass. Okay, so that's a major consideration in beef carcass evaluation. Another major consideration in terms of yield grade is trying to get at how much muscle is in the carcass. 
And so to assess muscling in the carcass, we'll commonly use a beef grid. And the beef grid is put together in such a way that each dot on this grid represents a tenth of a square inch uh, of measurement. And so we'll lay that grid on this muscle in a way that we can simply do an assessment or do a counting of the number of dots that actually are touching the muscle of the ribeye and we can count the dots and, and measure that. So for example, we would, we, would measure, we would measure on this one, we'd count every dot that was in this pre-drawn 11 inch area that was not touching muscle, so that one's on fat and that one's on fat. All the rest of these happen to count, so we'd have two that don't contribute to the area of the muscle, and then we'd count the ones that are on the outside of the pre-drawn area. So if I've got two that don't count, then I've got one that does, and another one that does, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen dots that are in the muscle but not in my pre-drawn area. So I've got 16 that contribute to size, two that didn't, and I've got a pre-drawn 11 inch area. I've got 14 still that are on the positive side, so I would have a 12.4 inch ribeye. Okay? And so that muscling area, that size of the ribeye, contributes to my assessment of, again, this, this factor we call the yield grade. And that yield grade is really ends up being what we develop out of a formula that takes into account muscling and fatness both on the inside of the carcass or both on the outside of the carcass as well as the fat that's on the inside of the carcass. And on the inside we've got what's referred to as kidney fat or kidney and pelvic fat. The amount of kidney and pelvic fat also is another way to do, we'll do an assessment of the amount of waste that a carcass has. Okay? And so those things get all figured into this, this number that we call a yolk grade. So when we get all done, we've got a yield grade that takes into account outside fat, inside fat, muscling, and carcass weight. And the lower, the lower the numerical result that we get, the better. Because the lower yield grade is consistent with the carcass that has a higher expectation of retail product yield. Okay? So we do that on every single carcass. The other factors that we consider, besides yield, which is cutability, is we look at beef quality. And we've already mentioned that briefly, but for quality, we'll look at the maturity of the carcass. We'll look again at these cartilage tips, and just to do a verification that, they, that the animal originated from a young, youthful animal that should deliver quality product. And usually in our youth project livestock, these are all just fine. They're all young animals. That's already been verified. After that, we'll look at the lean color. Because lean color contributes to our assessment of uh, quality grade and, and of maturity of the animal. And then we'll finally go ahead and we'll look at the amount of marbling. And the amount of marbling is assessed as the amount of fat flex inside the muscle itself. And we evaluate the marbling on the basis of how much marbling is there, also what is the fineness of that marbling, what is the, the particle size, and finally we'll look at the distribution and because in an ideal sense we'll have a desirable amount of marbling that is fine, it's small textured, and it's evenly distributed across the ribeye muscle. And those are compared against the set of USDA standards that, uh, that we have, marbling photos that we have that are developed by USDA for the assessment of marbling and therefore the assignment of quality grade to beef. So when we get all done what we've got is we've got a yield grade, we've got a quality grade, and then we do a comparison. And we want the carcass that does the best job of giving us the desirable yield grade and a desirable quality grade. And the way the beef industry is working right now is that if the carcasses have what we'll call acceptable cutability, in other words, they're desirable from a muscle and a leanness standpoint, then we let quality do a lot of our determination of overall carcass desirability. In other words, if we have a set of carcasses, for example, these two right here, that are both desirable as far as yield grade, 
They're both trim. They've both got nice ribeye areas. They've got well-muscled grounds. They kind of do a lot of things well as far as cutability. Well, then we'll, we'll focus more intensely on the amount of quality that they have. And in essence, we'll give a lot of latitude and quality. This carcass, for example, has a great deal of quality. It grades at least into the upper part of choice and potentially into the low prime category. And therefore, it's going to deliver more carcass value. It's going to have a higher retail value than this other carcass, which grades more nearly what we would consider to be on the low side of the choice quality grade. And so in this assignment, we would say quality wins because the cutability is close enough to the same that we're going to let quality do the determination. And so we would rank the higher quality carcass over the lower quality carcass because both of them deliver desirable uh, yield considerations.